Hey, Alec Pierce again at the ranch, back again with my windmill. I'm having so much fun as I'm working on this thing. Everything's rusty, everything's old, everything's stuck. But uh, I'm good at that kind of stuff, and I'm, a, I'm an uh, old, rusty, stuck stuff. Anyway, uh, we're getting it together, and I want, I'm having a lot of fun as well exploring this and, uh, and sharing with you how these things work. Now, I had mentioned earlier that the standard that we use here is a special standard. It, first of all, is a windmill standard. The standard, remember, is the thing up there that you see above the ground. So I can pump it with a hand pump to get water if I want to drink, a bucket of water, or I can connect it with a pin to the windmill, and the windmill takes it up and down and pumps water. Yeah. And then uh, we also talked about the pump, the pump which is 20, way down there past Kevin, 20 feet down there is the actual pump. That's the thing with the piston and the check valve. And there's a rod that comes all the way up this, it goes right up, up to the, uh, up to the standard uh, to be pulled by the windmill. So now, this is the other thing that's really interesting about my particular standard. This is called a three-way. I call it a diverter. It's properly called in the catalogs. BD Pumper calls it a three-way. Okay, whatever. A diverter. So let's just recap what we're trying to do. The water comes from the well, from the pump down there. It comes up this pipe, and it comes up like this, and it comes into this, up to this cast iron box. Now, normally that water would come up here and it would go right out the spout. And if you have a bucket hanging on the spout, you get a bucket of water. And when you finish, you stop pumping or you turn off the windmill and you go home with your bucket of water. But this particular standard was uh, set up uh, with a three-way, as BD calls it, so it could be used, be used by farmers to fill uh, a, a, a horse trough, a cattle trough, or it could be sent underground to a barn at some distance. Could be any distance. Could be 20 feet or 200 feet. Doesn't matter. It's underground. It doesn't freeze, you see. It has to be four or five feet underground. How does it do that? How do you select that? Well, here's the way it works. Really quite simple. Again, water comes up like this. That's this pipe right here. Can you see it on there, Kev? So this is the pump way down there, and this is the water pipe. This is a rod that's going up top there to be pumped up and down. Now you notice that, that this, that's this pipe right here, buddy. Can you see that whole pipe, that black pipe? It ends right there. What's with that? Well, it doesn't have to go all the way. Nothing's gonna go up there because the rod goes up about halfway through this pipe and there's a, there's a, a, a washer, a big rubber washer on the rod, okay? It seals in this pipe. That keeps the water from going out because we don't want the water to go out that pipe. We want it to go to the spout or to the barn, not to come pouring out here. So the, the sucker rod is going up and down. The sucker rod has a rubber seal on it right there. So the water can't get out. So it's water gets trapped in this cast iron box right here. There it is. Here's the diagram here. It's full of water, you see? So now you gotta decide what do you want to do with that water? Well, that's where the lever, the lever up there in the standard we showed you earlier. If you pull the lever up like this, okay, what happens is this rod, that's the lever rod, pulls up. And this rubber seal goes up and it seals right across there. So the water cannot get out through this opening and go up to the spout. Instead, it goes down through here to the barn. It's that simple. And this pulls up far enough that it seals the spout. So the water that comes up from the well goes into this box and now it has to go out through this pipe over here to the barn, to the cattle trough, wherever you want to go. It's up to you. When you want to have a drink of water or a bucket of water from the spout, then you take that lever up top there and you push it down. And this goes down like that. And now this rubber washer right there opens the pipe to the spout and it comes down and it closes, seals the pipe to the barn. So now the water comes up into this box. It can't get out here because it's sealed. So it goes up out the spout and you get a nice drink of fresh well water. It's just that simple. Take a look at this diagram for a few seconds and you'll understand it's really very simple. Just remember, the water's coming up for the pump. This is the sucker rod sealed here so it can't get out. Fills up this box. It actually gets under pressure because it can't get out the pump. It's sealed. If you saw my last episode on the pump, it's got check valves. The water can't get down there. It's being forced up by the piston. It actually builds up pressure in here. Yeah. And then this is your selector rod, which is on the standard, and you either lift it like this to send it to the barn, or you push it down to have it go up the spout. Is that clear? Well, if you understand it, Kevin, everybody else will for sure. <laughs> anyway, I thought some of you guys would have a windmill 
and are thinking of restoring it, and maybe you have an adapter or a diverter or a three-way, as BD calls it, down here under, underground in the well itself, you might be interested in seeing how that works. There is a stuffing box right here because the rod coming down from the lever goes into a has to go through a stuffing box. It has to move up and down but not leak. So there's a stuffing box down there, and a stuffing box is kind of neat. A stuffing box is exactly what its name implies. It, in fact, is a brass half-inch hole because the pipe, the, the rod is half-inch. The half-inch rod goes through there. Not tight, but it goes through there. And then in this, in this little space down in here, uh, you, you fill that with stuffing. Yeah, there's actually this proper stuffing. It's, um, it's a cord, uh, like, a, like a strong nylon twine or cotton twine, but it's been soaked in graphite. So it's lubricant and it seals. And you put a whole bunch, you put the rod through with this above it, and you put a whole bunch down in there, you tap it down in there, and then you put this in, you push this down, and you tighten this down in there. And as that tightens down, that nut, it squeezes that stuffing down and tightly against the rod. So the rod is sliding up and down inside that graphite lubricated stuffing. Water can't get out through there. That's all it is. That's why it's called a stuffing box. You stuff something in there to seal it so it doesn't leak. Anyway, there you go. More terminology and more interesting things about those old-fashioned windmills. They were pretty smart, those old guys, huh? Don't forget, 100 and, 120 years ago they built this thing. Anyway, talk to you soon. I got more to do in the windmill and some other neat stuff as well. For you guys, Alec Pierce at the ranch. Talk to you soon.